What do you learn, I guess, from um, Friday night? Oh, look, we've reviewed Friday night. To be honest, we've sort of moved on. It's a long time ago. Um, you know, some things there which uh, throughout the course of the game we weren't, we didn't do as well as we could have. Um, but that said, we gave ourselves a great opportunity to win that game. As I said, on after the game, we uh, we didn't get it done. You talk about you moved on. Would you have felt any different, like now today, if you hadn't won that game? Perhaps is it is it really just a fine line in terms of how you feel about a week of footy? Yeah, it does. It becomes that. If you if you win by three points, you probably you, you walk in with a skip on your step and, and you you know they sing the song and the guys are happy. You lose by three points. It's it's a real interesting space to be in, and it's one thing we had to be mindful of as a coaching group was to make sure that we we maintained our positivity about our performance. Disappointed as we were, uh, we recognised we did a lot of things right, and we and we put a we put a good performance on the table. Um, the fact we didn't win is gives us some areas we can keep working on. But I'd like to think that even if we'd won that game by three points, we would have probably reviewed in a similar way. So. Um, important we keep really positive uh, in terms of our messaging to the players because um, they're in a good headspace and they're playing some really good positive footy themselves, which is, uh, which is important. So you're not satisfied, though? Obviously, good performance, but you didn't get the point. So there's no satisfaction, is there, among the group? No, not at all. Not at all. I, th I think uh, we went there uh, with the expectation and the desire to play to win the game, and we didn't win the game, so we came away disappointed. But um, through that, it's a, it's a part of the journey. You take some positives and some things which we're doing at the moment which are giving us an opportunity to win games. There's some things we're doing which we need to keep tidying up um, to give ourselves a better chance to, to, to ensure victory. Did you ask the umpires, the umpires board obviously about the decisions? Did you take it to the, to the AFL to get some clarification around anything? Or? No, I haven't done that as yet. So oh, plan to the rule? No, um, what, Miller and Crouch, they chance? Yeah, well, both of them trained fully this morning, so that's great. Um, they'll be both available for selection. It makes it for, a, for an interesting discussion this afternoon at match committee. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll see how, the, how we go with that. Did you touch on that last stoppage, the third man up with Lewis? I mean, that's a, um, Tomo was standing off him a couple of metres. It's probably not something that you want to see that leads to the game-winning goal for the other side. Yeah, well, if you look through that stoppage, there's a number of things there, which, you know, some of them were in our control somewhere. We had, I think it was... 5v3 around that contest and you know Hawthorne put some good pressure on and were able to scramble the ball forward so um, there's a bit of just footy in that you know it just happened to be at the end of the game but we'd seen a fair bit of that throughout the night and um, that's what happens that's the that's the fine line we talk about between you know being on the right side versus the wrong side of the ledger. Don, is, is Crouch a realistic chance to play AFL? He's missed three now or would you, does he need a run in the SNFL? Yeah that's something we'll discuss and assess um, you know it's a he has, he has missed those games and therefore whether we need to bring him back through Sandville or not, um, as I said, I can't speak for the match committee, we'll, we'll cover that this afternoon. It's all well and good sort of getting up and getting inspired for a Friday night game against the reigning premiers, but do you expect to learn anything new or different about the group going into a game like this against a, the only winless side in the comp? I think we're always learning. That's the beauty of, of what we're, well, the industry we're in. Is um, Each week provides a different challenge and a new challenge, but a challenge you've got to be up for, and the same this week uh, against Fremantle. And a lot's been made of Fremantle and, and their start to the season, but you know, I looked through their side last night and I had a look at some of the footage from the games they've played, uh, and they've been, they've been right amongst it in the last three games. You know, against Carlton, they lose by under a goal. They're basically level with North and with uh, West Coast in the previous two games. So, so as much as they haven't had a win, they're doing a lot right. And, we prepare on the basis of a, a Fremantle side coming over that will be desperate for a win, um, as we are after last week. So, so we are the wounded opponent, because as you said, everyone's riding them off. Yeah. Not five, Pike's gone, Johnson's gone, Sandland's not playing, so they look like an easy, easy kill this week. Yeah, well, I'd, I think nothing could be further from the truth uh, in terms of why I'm looking at it. Um, as I said, I looked at some of their footy, and there's there's some things there which I know that they're working on, but they're they're well coached, they're a proud club, um, and we're going to expect them coming across here searching for a win, as I said. But we're disappointed if they had more motivation than our guys. How do you tell your players? How do they guard against that with your players? As, as Harry said, the big build up the Friday night game. Now you're unbelievably hot favourites. How do you make sure your players are 100% switched onto the task? Oh, the reality is we, we control how we play and how we turn up and our mindset, and that's the same every week. doesn't matter who the opposition is. Um, we have to prepare for the opposition, we plan for that opposition, um, and then we get ready to play, and, and we, we can control how we play and, and, and what attitude and effort we bring. And that's the same this week as every other week. Yeah, the injury list is pretty extensive, though. Do you know, you know what team you're really going to face for our was? Oh, look, the, subject to what changes they make, um, I think the, the main guys they've, they've got out, as, as obviously as mentioned, is Fife, um, Sandylands, uh, Johnson now, uh, and Bennell's the other one. And, and other than that, I think they're, they're, 
they're relatively healthy from their, their list. So um, we expect a really strong for our side. Have they changed the way they've played much of what you reviewed? I know you talked about you've been impressed with some of the things that they've done. Have they changed so much to get themselves in this situation? Oh, it's probably it's probably not appropriate for me to put commentary on, on Freeman and what they've changed. I know that Ross is on the record of saying they wanted to tweak a few things and some of those things have worked, some of those haven't. So um, that's, that's the nature of the game. Looking at the draw pre-season, Don, it was meant to be really difficult. Is three and two about right for your boys? Is it all of a sudden the draw this week against the bottom side now and the draw doesn't seem too bad? Oh, look, as I've said from the start, we didn't consider the draw from how it looked in terms of, you know, hard, easy, away, home, all those sorts of things. We really just look, and it's, again, really cliche, but we really look one week at a time. Um, so, you, and it, I think the draw has shown exactly that. You can't afford to look any further ahead than that because we're a really even competition, you know, where there's no easy games and this week's exactly the same. Uh, we're getting a lot of younger sides who are emerging and playing some really strong footy. So it's foolhardy if you start thinking one further ahead than what's right in front of you. And what's right in front of us is, is Fremantle come Saturday. Well, the only often one, obviously, you can't probably talk about the incident yet goes up for the tribunal tonight, but how have you seen his form? And is he close to getting a game or where's he at the peak? Yeah, he's he's moving his way uh, into into selection calculation. He's obviously had a, an interrupted pre-season, um, coming back off that knee, and he's built starting to build some some good form in the sample. So he's he's getting himself into the mix. Um, does this, how much does this hurt him then? This incident tonight? Oh, hard to say. Hard to say. Let's let's wait on the results of the, the tribunal. The, the game's got got faster this year. The, the scoring's up and a lot less stoppages. Have you seen a direct? change as, as a coach, obviously you didn't coach a senior level last year, have you seen the change and, and why is that unfolded like it has? Yeah, it's interesting. I think it has changed and the game always changes. I think, you know, every year I reckon it's almost a, a six to eight week window where something changes in the game, the way it's played or the way it's coached or something's brought something new to the to the game. So we're always trying to make sure we're, we're aware of those things and, and, trend, and, and trending ourselves and the way we want to play um, along the lines of how the game's been played. But you're yeah, right, I think probably the stoppage numbers have come down. Um, they're probably there's more, um, there's more sort of uh, focus on the turnover game you know, at the moment. Um, so it's important you're, you're sort of good. But fundamentally it comes down to the, the three things that we want to work on in terms of the phases of the game and, and we keep, keep working our way through those areas to improve in that and that puts you in really good stead. But what are those three? Well, that's just the contest. I mean, at the end of it, fundamentally, you've got to win around the ball. You know, that's, I think the numbers still stack up. Um, if, you, if you win your share of the contested ball, it gives you the chance to get, to get field position. Um, how you move the ball, how efficient you are with the ball, and then how you defend it. Um, and those things all link in together, and they're all intertwined, because if you do one poorly, then you're defending. If you do one well, then you're attacking. Um, that's how we see it, and that's how we coach it. As there all changes, obviously, with less rotations and also more probably deliberate out of bounds. Have they had an impact on the game change a little yep. bit? Yep. Yeah, no question. The rotations have. The game's probably now um, we're not able to sustain the ground being as small now because of the, the, the players maintaining their, their, their speed and their intensity and their running. Um, so the game opens up a little bit more. And clearly the out of bounds means there's less stoppage, which means the ball's in motion more. So that we're no longer going from stoppage to another stoppage to another stoppage. It's now flowing back and forth. So it's always changing. Um, and as I said, we've just got to keep evolving with the times. There's a lot of talk about uh, Mason Cox's debut and then the very next day in the US as a camp for yeah. potential players. Is that something that the, you'd ever consider in terms of reaching to, to grab a player from those sorts of areas? Oh, look, it's uh, probably not here to speak about list management, but obviously there's a talent pool there of, of guys and it's a great story. For a guy two years ago was was running around at a, a combine in, in America now playing for Collingwood in front of 85,000. I think it's a great story. It's great for our game and I think we're going to see more guys come from international and on those sorts of, um, uh, under those sorts of arrangements, which I think is great for the game. How do you guys have seen improved this week that wasn't there against Hawthorne? Is there any, any focus with you guys at all? Uh, not, not specifically. We're probably looking more at our, our total game. As I said, how it, all, how it all comes together. As I said, we did a lot, a lot right last Friday night. We walk away disappointed, but um, it's important we keep playing the way we've, the way we've trained. Um, and the way we train is the way we want to see and we're playing. We're seeing that on the ground, which is really good. Um, probably the area which we would, we'd like to, to keep tidying up is, is obviously our team defence. Um, but that's just one phase of the game. Um, we can help that many ways.